Researchers are working on new ways to use artificial intelligence. On 60 Minutes last week, we showed you how IBM's technology named Watson is helping fight cancer. I spoke with Dr. Ned Sharpless, who runs the Leinberger Cancer Center at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. It is one of more than 20 institutes using Watson. Sharpless explained what the technology brings. They taught Watson to read medical literature, essentially, in about a week. It was not very hard. And then Watson read 25 million papers in about another week. And uh, then it also scanned the web for uh, clinical trials open at other centers. And all of a sudden, we had this complete list that was sort of everything one needed to know. Did this blow your mind? Oh, it totally blew my mind. Watson's cognitive computing will now be available nationwide for the first time. IBM CEO Jenny Rometty is with us. Welcome. Thank you, Charlie. Good morning. Oh, gosh. Good morning. IBM is betting the company on artificial intelligence. It is the next era. I mean, just think of this, um, and maybe an easy way to think of it is, this is the third era of technology that's really all we've ever known. The first was machines that counted, and the second was things that were programmed. And that's everything you know today, your cell phone, anything, you program it. This is a whole generation of systems that they learn, and they just learn. You don't program them. And so what, what are the uses? We'll talk about medicine in a moment, but yeah. what, what new world is it opening up? Uh, this, to me, this is a world that's going to solve so many problems that aren't solved. And so, as I always say, we'll solve the unsolvable, like health care, like risk, like food safety, and on the other side, everyday life. Um, in fact, I've, I've really been bold. I think in the next five years, you'll use this kind of technology to make almost any important decision. And it could be around the weather, it could be around education, it could be around shopping, but at the other end, it will be about risk, finance, uh, whether it's anything to do with anything complex in a system in our world that's out there. It and will so, affect everything. Everything. And so what is IBM and Watson doing with Quest? Ah, so this is a great, um, I, I know you just showed the clip from 60 Minutes, which was a little bit of an uh, introduction into this, but we've been working, and one of the first things we did with Watson was work on healthcare. So we just announced Watson Genomics with Quest. And what this is all about is being able to do genetic analysis for basically anyone in the United States. So Quest, if you know them, they're a diagnostic company. If you've ever gone to the doctor, they serve 50% of the doctors out there who then have and are used by and serving 70% of the country's patients with cancer. So how this works is that uh, if your doctor believes that some sort of genetic sequencing will really help you, looking at the tumor, looking at your normal tissue, uh, they go to Quest. Uh, Quest can do the analysis, the genetic sequencing. If it's more complex, they'll use the Broad Institute. And then Watson takes over. Watson, as Charlie, you just showed in the clip, has been training and frankly, 20 of the best oncology centers in the world and universities have been training Watson. And what he's looking for is what are the real mutations and then matching up with what are the possible treatments that could matter. And so it is impossible for a doctor, no matter how great they are, to keep up with this. And then go to the recommendations, go to the pathologist, to the doctor. And you've said that it's not your goal to replace anyone to replace yeah. a doctor in this case. What is the relationship then? What's the ideal relationship? Yeah. I, you know, I've watched this relationship between the doctor. In fact, we believe this era is man and machine. And in fact, I know we say artificial intelligence, but it is really augmenting our intelligence because I don't care what your job is, your jobs, there's so much information and we call it cognitive because of cognitive overload, you can't keep up. In healthcare, 8,000 papers a day. And, and another great statistic, in the healthcare system, there is three million times more data than all books ever written. So what's a doctor yes. going to do? Yeah. And so this idea I see, and I've watched it with the oncologist, it's very collegial. Mm -hmm. It's back and forth because you're testing your ideas and your thinking, and that's how I see it working in almost every profession. I have to ask this because we promoted this question. Um, critics who say machines could get too smart and doom us all. Yeah, look, that isn't our goal. And in fact, this is supervised learning. So think of it as Watson's been trained by the best oncologists. He's been trained by the best people in risk and financial services. He's been trained for teachers by teachers. And so this type of technology, when I say augmenting, it's been trained. You have all this data. But you talk to everybody. Are we going to reach a point in which machines are smarter than humans? I don't think we're going to reach that point anytime soon. 
and this will bring so much more benefit. This is an area, and it's our goal, that this is supervised learning, and it is man and machine. Yeah, that's what yeah. Matt Tabium always says, we'll it's do. man yeah. plus man machine. Man and machine, yeah. and that is what we see really playing out. Yeah, Elon Musk has called uh, artificial intelligence like summoning the demons, the concern that they could some point become yeah. smarter than humans. But I think of Watson as more of sharing information and, and processing all that information more quickly so the doctors... Uh, that's what it is. The yeah. rapidity and the velocity of the ability to assimilate information you, is blows your Yes, mind. and the part people forget, it's the different kinds of information. It's one thing to have things written down, but it's very different because Watson has learned to read x-rays, images, photos, pictures, movies, right. tweets, sensors. That's really the difficult and this part. Really, and this opens up personalized medicine for everyone. It, it, it does. In fact, and, and it's more than personalized medicine. It'll be personalized medicine for everyone. In fact, that's actually the meaningful part about this Quest diagnosis. This really scales this kind of technology in a way it's accessible to everyone. And that to me is important. Because uh, by the way, this kind of technology for and when you do genomic sequencing, it's typically for late stage cancers, mm -hmm. stage mm -hmm. three, stage four, and they're really difficult. And they're difficult to find what is and you've if you've known anyone, you've always said, are we sure we've looked at everything? Right. And this is one way to do that. Oh, thanks, thanks, yeah. Thanks, yeah. And the end goal that people can, we can cure cancer more quickly. Yeah. Absolutely. Taking cancer head on. Jenny, thanks so much. Great to have you here.